day one at Sun and Fun. And we're looking at an airplane that's, I'm told, making a debut here. I'm Dan Johnson speaking to Don Wade, who's going to tell me a little bit about the Patriot aircraft. But we've seen Patriot in another form earlier, but it didn't look quite like this. So what's the difference? What was the other one, and what's this one, Don? The other one we uh, built, we built two of them. It's the Patriot Recruit, and we were working with the kids over at the Lakeland Air Club. And that airplane, again, is 108 horsepower. You're going to see it today in the stall demonstration, matter of fact. All right. The kids are going to really do good in that. But this guy right here, this is this is an accumulation of many, many years of working in, and building on Piper aircraft. We took everything that we've learned and put into this guy. This is called a Super Patriot. The Super Patriot is a, a brainchild, like I say, that it has a 176 horsepower engine. It's a Lycoming IO320. Uh, it's got a ground adjustable system propeller on it, and between the E-Mags and that and that engine, it really makes a great performer out of this airplane. And uh, what's the, what's your, is it a, a consumer airplane? What's your purpose with the airplane? This airplane here, we really built it and designed it for the people that want to do off off airport, okay. you know. That's why um, big boy tires. Big boy tires, exactly. You know, this, this particular version you can order. It's got titanium landing gear even on it. It's all about really keeping the wing loading down so that low speed handling, you know, just the feel of flying, you know, like you're connected to the airplane is what we were looking for. It's kind of like, a, again, the early Super Cubs. The, the airplanes are light. And this airplane flies. That's correct, yeah. We, we built this airplane. If you build it like we recommend, you could come in at 1025 as far as the, you know, the empty weight. And it's got a 1900 pound gross weight. But again, it's all about making sure that the airplane handles that. Um, creature comforts is in this airplane as well. Accessibility for a mechanic as well. So all the three major things, how it flies, how it feels when you're in the airplane sitting in it and working on it, because we all know you don't want to be on your back leaning underneath the panel trying to work on something. This guy here has all the features that you're going to enjoy. So what category are you going to put this in? Is that experimental? Experimental. Right. A experimental amateur built. But right now we're just offering it as a builder's assist program if somebody wants to do it. Um, we're still working on some of our documentations to make it easier to build. We don't want to just put it out there and, and make it difficult for people. Sure. We want the good drawings, exploded views, all, all those items. So right now it's just all offered as experimental amateur built, but a builder's assist program through our factory which is in the Birmingham, Alabama area. Birmingham, Alabama, that was mm -hmm. going to ask right, you right. next. Okay, so people that said, wow, I, it, it convinces me, I've got to have it, yep. we come there and make arrangements and come there, I should say, and then come down and uh, work with your building there. Right, and we, we really, really, really would love to do that and, and show people some of the techniques that we do and sure. give them the fit and finish that we like to do because that's what makes the big difference is a lot of the airplanes out there, the fit and finish, it's all up to the customer, and sometimes you know it, it lacks a little bit because again they don't do it every day, you know. Sure. So we're we're there to help them make Builder sure. Builder assist is uh, popular now, and it's going to get more so with Mosaic. They're going to open that door even further, so we know that. And, yeah. Or that's what they told us anyway. So tell me a little bit about the basic construction of the airplane, not the labor of construction, the materials of construction. I tell you, that's good to ask that. When you get one of these projects from us, the wings are already filled. Oh. All you have to do is put the wires in it and the cables. The fuselage is a sealed, you know, chromoly steel, 4130 steel, sealed frame. Which are all, welded. All, all welded, all ready to go. So there's a lot of stuff. All the hard stuff is really already done for you, honestly. And we know this is uh, FAA is good at that because you can do it efficiently. So what does the builder have to do that adds up to his 51% hour? You know, that's the thing is you're doing all the wiring, you're doing the fit and finish on all the panels, you're making sure that the first covering the airplane, of course, you know, you've got to make sure all the stringers are done on the side of the airplane and then fitting the engine, doing all the electronics, and it, qual it qualifies for the 54% when it's all said and done. And okay. we help you with that as well. And again, then how many hours would someone invest to get all that done? This, this builder assistant, or how are they going to help? What time do they need to commit to do that? They need to commit to about nine weeks. Nine, nine weeks. weeks overall, the whole process. So okay. it's really fairly quick. Not too bad. So, no. So they probably come for a couple of weeks, go home. Yep. Leave it there with you and come back and do some more. Is that That's right. Yep. Yep. Okay. We, we help them in every facet of it we, with the housing, however, anything needs to be done. We have all that set up. All they got to do is call us, give us a check, and we'll get them started. 
Okay. Now I see the wing is is fabric covered. Yes. Uh, and uh, some of, some other parts here are not fabric covered. Mm -hmm. How do you supply the various parts to them? Um, well, what we do again, all this stuff already comes uh, routered out, CNC routered. Um, the cowling is already made, but they still have to fit it. It's a carbon fiber cowling that we're custom made. Um, this, you know, it's like a super cut, but an ancient daddy super cut, promise you. And of course, fabric covering, everything from pretty much the front of the, right here by the door back is all fabric. Um, okay. Yeah, wings are fabric. But again, you look at the finish that we do and we help provide to the customer. We, we really we really slick it out and, and fill the weave so that it looks really like metal when it's all set down. Now the wing is fabric covered. Is yep. it all aluminum structure inside? Correct, all aluminum structure. It's got the box structure on the front. That really makes it a lot stronger. It's all the way to the wingtip. Okay. If you look at the wingtip, we use an aluminum tube on the wingtip versus the old wooden bow. You know, things like that, it makes it easier. Uh, we're in the process of coming with a carbon fiber wingtip, which that's the hardest part is covering a wingtip. But that's going to help eliminate if okay. somebody wants to. I see. So that make that job a little quicker for a builder, not have to deal with all those curves. Right, right. You know, we use a lot of uh, 6061 T6 aluminum, which for people that, that don't understand that, it's really a corrosion-resistant aluminum. Like our lift struts right here, these guys, and they come from Airflames, Alaska. We have to really got to give them credit. Oh, okay. And uh, they you know, supply the material for you, or the they, they actually supply the whole lift strut. I see. Okay. Yeah. Right. So it's a it's a good combination. Um, but if you when you get a chance, you got to look inside of this airplane. The panel is like a fighter pilot. You know, everything's looking at you. You know, even the fuel shutoff valve is down here looking at you. You know, so ergonomically, it just it really fits to you when you're in there. You're like, wow, this is it. It feels like it fits you. It looks pretty roomy inside. I'm looking kind of over your shoulder here, and I can see oh, that's that gap that my hand is forming right here is about six or eight inches. Mm -hmm. That's on each side of the seat. In the back seat, you can kind of see in the camera's view there, there's a big wide thing. So uh, what is the cabin width here? Four inches wider than a normal Super Cup. Which is what? Yeah, uh, it's this right here is 32 inches. 32 inches 32 wide. 32 inches yeah, that's, wide. That's quite wide for a table. Oh, it's, it's huge. We kind of call the, the back seat the Barker Lounge because it's adjustable four inches. Oh. And so you could tilt it, you could slide it back, whatever you want to do. Front seat's adjustable too for the pilot. But the other one is when you get ready to get in the back, look at that right there. Makes it a lot easier to get in the back. Man, and get and the back all the structure down here, now you said this is steel down here? Titanium. Titanium, yep, okay. Yep. So you got, a, I see a lot of structure down here that looks like it make it pretty easy to get in, even the back seat. With yep. Sometimes in a cup, pretty challenging proposition. It is. Uh, you got structure up here you can hang on to, but you kind of got to hoist yourself in there. Yeah. It's more like a step. And, and exactly, you watch my wife and everything. You know, we're not spring chickens, and that's one of the things that we figured into the airplane is that we want to make it easier for an older fat guy with bad knees, I'm all the above, <laughs> to be able to get an airplane. So, and a normal Super Cubs, it has a bar that comes right here. Uh -huh. So we wind up, we had about another 10 inches right here, so we have a bigger door. So it makes it easier for Yeah, otherwise us. you got to pull that knee up all the way to chew your knee. Yeah, you got to be like a contortionist, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And like I say, with the titanium, you got your fueling step to get up to do the fuel. But ah, you also yeah, have this. This is for here. Right, and ah, okay. you, but you got your crossbar and the tire. So now it's almost like a ladder. You can, Like I say, you can step in it without having to worry about falling. <laughs> yeah. You know, and... And it's, it's really nice to see my wife being able to get in and out of the airplane because she's had knee replacements and stuff. And, and it's really, really, really nice from that standpoint. Oh, good user access. Yeah. Yes. Now, you must have tanks on both sides then, I'm guessing? Oh, yeah. Two 18-gallon tanks. So you got one normal. of these on the other side of the airplane, too, so you can fuel it up. Okay. Right. It's right. definitely pretty tall. I'm going to come around here by you. But, you know, this is – I'm about 5'10". This is well above my head here. So yeah. this is a pretty long, pretty tall airplane. It is. It is. What kind of engine you got power? This is a Lycoming IO320. Um, it's got a cold air induction system. It's got 9 to 1 to 1 compression ratio pistons, and it's got EMAX. That combination, we have a lighter motor, okay? The ground adjustment system propeller is lighter, and so it really makes a difference in the performance. Uh, and we talk about wing loading, that's that's a big one right there. Tell me, tell me a couple of numbers about performance. So stall, cruise, yep. climb with this engine and this configuration here. Yeah, well, the thing is, is a couple things, the, the far as performance-wise, uh, stall speed is like 29 miles an hour. Oh, wow. It's just really low. Oh, so 29 stall, what kind of cruise? Um, Typical cruise, uh, 3,000 feet, that kind of thing. Well, on this guy here, if you just, depends on how you have the prop adjusted, but about 90 miles an hour is a typical cruise on it, economy cruise is what we call that. 
and with it fully pitched and you're really pushing the fire up, you could do about 105. So miles an hour. Miles an hour. Like, yeah, got to remember miles an hour. Tell me about uh, climb ring with this engine and this airplane as it is. Oh, man, it's a dream. Uh, just the other day, we, we listed it as 2,500 feet a minute. Oh, wow. And just with me in it, I'm a big guy in full tank of fuel. I was at 2,350 feet a minute that's climbing like a homesick angel. Wow, that's a, that's a bunch. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I want to touch on the fact that this same airplane, or one very much like this, was, is, was on display in the uh, Lakeland uh, Aero Club. It's just the local high school here, and they have an air club here, and they use that field during the year. So it's a real established operation now. But they were actually building your, the other one, the one yeah. you call the recruit. Is yeah. that correct? That's correct. Yep. Okay, so the kids did the work on that. And now this is your first one of the Super Patriot. This is the very first example. Yes. And you're just showing it here now for the first time. So if somebody says, got to have it, what kind of, what kind of time frame do they have before they can take the I mean, of a kit. Um, right now, our first delivery time frame is August 1st. If somebody were to call us, they could get on the list. And we're going to look at producing one, but about every 12 to 14 weeks after that. Okay. So if yeah, somebody wants to get on schedule, all they got to do is get a hold of me. They can get a hold of us at PatriotAircraftUSA.com. Very good. There you can get all the answers and more information they want. If you want to check out other things in the affordable air, aircraft range, come to ByDanJohnson.com. Thanks so much for talking with Don Wade and myself here at Sunnyside.